Welcome back to another edition of Zero Block 30. Today we have three rounds in the magazine. Round number one, some old men and old lady. We're going to be yelling at the clouds today because Generation Z is back at it again. We actually might not be yelling at them. I'm not sure how everybody else feels. We're going to get into it, how we feel about them. Round number two, the ick. It's a big problem. And according to the New York Post, we are bringing in 23-year-old Kate to talk about what does and what does not cause the old ick. And I think it's a lot. Like, I've seen, there's a lot of ick going on. Yeah. And I mean, the ick is, I kind of love this term, the ick. Because Great in the term. past, before this term, like in my dating days, there were things that a guy would do that were totally like innocuous, nothing bad, but it gave me the ick. And once I got the ick, like there's no going back. Like that's it. There is yeah. no going back at all. Completely subjective. Yeah. Big time. Uh, round number three, we're going to have a new type of hazardous duty pages came out. And we're going to talk about how we feel about that. I think everything's a hazardous duty, basically. <laughs> I mean, if you're in the military, it's hazardous duty. I understand there's some that are more than others. We're going to talk about if the new one is good. But I think we can all agree on one of the aspects that they're improving is separation pay. Like they're going to increase the amount of money that people get for separation pay. Used to be 250. That's going up to 400, which I think is a great thing because 250 ain't shit. Like in today's world, 250s one trip to target that's like a trip to target all right now i want before we get going we're basically zbt daycare at this point we got yeah. cons on with maggie we got kate on with buckshot the whole squad well not me my kids are big enough where i could send them to school whether that be college or fifth grade and not going to have babies on the pod but if you hear a little gurgle every now and then just shut the fuck up about it we got <laughs> babies so if you can't we're making that, two Look, this is all military members, people that are military adjacent. If you can't suck it the fuck up and deal with a little bit of gurgling, this ain't the podcast for you because we're going to improvise, we're going to adapt, and we're going to overcome no matter how many babies there are. Cons wants more. Fill it up. Put it in like Kate's cousins. We're going to have 19 of those fuckers in some of these rooms, and you're not going to be able to do nothing about it, but yep. keep pushing play. Right, I'm going to start renting babies. Mm -hmm. Just bring them all in. in here. Yeah, I mean, if you ran... Like, Kay, you should, I don't think anybody would say anything like to a mom, like, hey, I'm just not coming in for a while. You could have multiple babies that you're kind of like daycare, Katie daycare, and then also do the podcast once a week. And you'd be rolling in the dough. You might make yeah. more money that way than you did on OnlyFans. I might start because taking care of a baby is so easy, you know? Yes. Super <laughs> Everybody get uh, good. I will say, uh, so Maggie coming two weeks early really put a damper on everything. Not a damper, but it, it screwed with our timeline because Alex had scheduled it kind of perfectly to where she had enough maternity and enough PTO to take her through the end of the year. And then she'd go back January 1, right when Maggie goes to daycare. Well, she came two weeks early. So Alex went back to work last week. Not too busy, not too busy this week. But let me tell you something. You know, we're trying to like trade off time with Maggie based on our, our schedule throughout mm -hmm. the day. Alex is a, little, a lot better at it than me where she can have her next to her, I guess, kind of like I do now. And as long as she's not losing her mind, she's good at it. But the idea of trying to do anything where you have to concentrate you can't do that with a baby. It's so, impossible, dude. It's impossible. Yeah. You think how hard could it be? And somehow it's, right. <laughs> it's very hard. No, it's extremely, extremely difficult. I, I, I my brain can't function at all. This is going to be a good episode. Her. Let's get, let's, yeah, let's get it. going with it. We got round number one. We're going to talk about the ick. I've heard Kate say this phrase. I've heard a lot of people say this phrase, mm -hmm. but there's just so many examples. I didn't expect, I'll be honest. I didn't expect the military to have a big problem with the ick. But they are, right, Katie? Well, I I feel like we, we didn't have the term for the ick, but we've all been icking for a long time. Oh, yeah. The military mm. are probably masters of ick and chatting about ick in the smoke pits. Um all right, so I'll tell you guys my ick story. Like You guys know that I went, if you've been listening for a while, you do, that I went, before the Marine Corps, I went to seminary, and I went to a Baptist school that was pretty conservative, like looking back, very, very conservative about the things that they wanted you to do. For instance, if you're going to chapel, you had to go to chapel. And if you had a girlfriend or something like that, you had to stick a Bible 
or a hymnal in between you whenever you were sitting. Couldn't be sitting next because we don't know if any finger banging or any South Carolina squeezers are going to be going on. So you got to be careful there. So a lot of the women that goes to these schools, because women in the Baptist church can't be pastors, you can't do any of that stuff, but they go to seminary to get what's called an MRS degree, where you just want to get married to somebody that's going to be a pastor. So you get kind of caught up in that. And you'll see TikToks about it from BYU where people get married in two weeks. They get married in two months. And it's simply because they want to fuck. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's sex shaming because you're not supposed to have sex whenever you get there. So whenever I met this, I met this young woman and we went out on our first date. We didn't go to a bar. We didn't go anywhere like that. We went to a place that was kind of like the North Carolina version of Shake Shack. I don't remember what it was. But we went out on three dates, basically the same kind of places because I didn't have a whole lot of money. But she was a milkshake head, like a super milkshake head where anywhere we went, milkshake. Adorable, right? Somebody that likes yeah. milkshake. Brings head. all the boys to the yard. That's cute. We got some milkshake going. But the way that she drank her milkshake is the reason why I didn't date her. Because she would take a sip of her milkshake and she would get like strawberry milkshake in between her lip and her teeth. And she would swallow it and like lick her lips really weird. And for some reason, every time she did, it made me want to puke because of the way <laughs> that she looked like she lived in a nursing home and she just couldn't drink this milkshake. And she was a milkshake head. I knew it was something that I was going to be grossed out with for the yeah. rest of my natural life. Her milkshake eating <clears throat> was the ick to me. Cons, do you have one? Yeah, that, kind of similar. And I was at a loss. And then you told that story and it kind of jogged my memory. There was this girl many years before my wife where when she was over at my apartment, she Tread would make her... Maggie's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done with this story. No, I'm just kidding. Um, when she was over at my apartment, she would make herself tea. And very, very often she'd make a full mug of tea, use a little bit of milk, take one or two sips, and then just leave it like on mm. the coffee table, on the counter. And I'm just thinking to myself, you clearly didn't want that, or or maybe you just wanted to have it in front of you, but I hate waste. And actually now the amount of things that just get maybe half drank and left, we'll see. Maybe things will be different in the house now, but in our apartment. They were half drink seltzers all the time. You know, what we used to call them in college when there was half Loaders. drunk beers. When there was half drunk beers all over the house, and um, and then I joined the military after I was that. But we called them wounded soldiers. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got some wounded, so we got if we can't leave them, and you couldn't leave a man behind. Yeah, so if you were drunk enough, you go through the house and finish them. Oh, Come just on. the thought of that. Just yep. the thought of that. Like the next morning when they're all coming warm home and, from the bar, we'd be like, look at all these wounded soldiers. We gotta make sure we can't leave them behind. And we'd be drinking Ugh. these like lukewarm schlitzes. Ew. Yeah. Ew. But anyway, yeah, my ick is mm. when people just don't finish their drink and, and leave mm. it somewhere that drinks should not be left. Katie. So that's mine. Mine was the guy in Philly. I online dating. Went on a few dates. He had money, which Katie rarely snagged herself a money man. And <laughs> uh, we went on a few dates. And I was like, I'm really into this guy. He had his own house in South Philly with a roof deck. I was like, come on. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. And then at the Army-Navy game, first kiss. I've told you guys about this. When he licked my face, he was like licking my face. Wait, wait. Time oh, out. Yeah. This was since we knew you? Yeah. It was at the first Army-Navy game, right? It that was we after went to? the. Yeah, yeah. The snowy one. Yeah, the one that like uh, Flo and Groberg was there. Yeah, and you you met Medal of Honor recipients on the bus, and you're like, "What is this? How did yeah. you break away?" We I thought we saw you the whole time. No, remember afterwards the weather was horrible that game. Yes. It was like pouring snow, and the guy was like, "Hey, I'm in the tailgate lot. I left early. Why don't you?" Because I think everybody, all the Barstool crew, was leaving the game a little bit early because it was like so miserable and the oh, score yeah. was whatever mm -hmm. and so i was like okay i'll come meet you in the lot and it was snow was falling and it was so beautiful and the the you know you hear the fireworks going off and we go to kiss and he just starts like <laughs> he was like licking my face you're lucky he didn't get frostbite dude me True. Too. i am truly lucky and i from that moment bad kissing is an ick oh like, yeah and there's bad really kissing, no terrible it. terrible i think yeah. you can get better at sex like that's something that you can learn but i don't think I think kissing's like innate. Like if you're bad at it, 
I don't know. But anyway, mm. that killed it for me. Even with the roof deck in South Philly. I know. Uh, mm. Quick question. You are dating a guy. He has a roof deck or a pontoon boat. Which one are you going with? Pontoon boat. I don't, Easy. You don't even have to. Right. That was I have a roof question. deck now. That was I'm a fine. ridiculous question by, my, by me. All right. Yeah. Let's get into some of the military ones. We got round number one. What do we got, Kate? Yeah, this comes to us from the Daily Mail, so take it with a grain of salt. I'll never take <laughs> but, uh, it with a grain of salt. This is like never. basically like uh, the National Enquirer, but over in the U. Anyway, the U.S. Army is facing a TikTok mutiny as Gen Z recruits are taken to social media to whine about low pay, shitty food, and fitness tests. The brazen posts by uniformed troops on U.S. bases represent an audacious challenge to top brass amid a recruitment crisis. The Army fell short of its target by 25% last year. One of the posts by military influencer Anthony Laster slams the army life for having no privacy, the pay sucks, shitty food, disrespectful leadership, no sleep, and has been viewed more than 600,000 times. Laster from Chicago ooh, ooh, oh, what's up? has more than a million followers on TikTok and made the public comments in uniform while on a mission in the desert. In another post, he claimed he spent his whole day watching TikToks while supposedly fighting the Taliban. Sure, Jan. It gives a woeful impression of America's fighting forces to potential recruits, which is likely to cause further animosity towards TikTok from critics. Politicians from both sides have concerns about the platform's links with China and accuse it of pushing subversive anti-U.S. propaganda. So maybe, where were... Go ahead, Kate. Maybe China's given Laster the big bucks, you know? Maybe so. Possibly. Maybe it's a little operative. So far in this story, like it's a much to do about nothing. In my yeah. opinion, this right. is these are the things that we've all bitched about for generations about the military. The difference is it's on TikTok now. That's the main difference. People that aren't around the military don't know, I guess, that forever we've complained about low pay, shitty food, and fitness tests. That's been a thing forever. I mean, also, I can't remember a time where you didn't do it. Almost any military movie. That's like what the theme is. Go watch Full Metal Jacket. Or like, Jarhead. Oh, here's a bunch of shit that sucks. Jarhead. Here's a bunch of shit that sucks. Even the comedy movies. It's like the joke is that they're all in the suck together and it sucks. And that's Forrest Gump. Right. Yeah. right. There's, nobody's I'm like just surprised the that they're willing to do these videos, these TikToks in uniform. With that's their the surprise. Yes. Yes. Very visible. That the fact that they're just zero repercussions or they're they're not in fear of any repercussions from their chain of command because lest we forget the military is very different from the civilian world you know civilian job you might not have as many rules in terms of what you are and are not allowed to do i have to imagine that military is a little more strict about this and i mean by the letter of the law aren't you undermining your chain of command by making all of these complaints publicly Oh, you absolutely yeah. are. I mean, right? You absolutely. The thing that surprises me, one, that you're doing it in uniform. I think that's absolutely foolish, and you're putting yourself in a terrible position where eventually you're going to be called to the carpet. But if you're like some of these folks, like that sergeant who's coming up on the end of his time, 600,000 TikTok followers is something that you could parlay into a little bit yes. of money. So you might yeah. not care about that negative counseling because that's the worst thing that's going to come. Like you, yeah. you're not going to get NJP. You're not going to get busted down unless you're saying something derogatory about a specific commander, a specific NCO that's much higher than you with names and all that stuff. That's the only time I can really think that you're going to get in trouble. But other than that, like t some folks will just take their rank off like uh, the army, for instance. I think the Air Force does it, too. Maybe the Navy as well. You just take the little Velcro rank off and then you I don't think, think it's you Velcro stay anymore. Is I don't it think not? it's Velcro anymore. I think it's now it's back to being sewn on, I think. Well, some of these TikTok, they'll just take their rank off or they're, they'll take their name tape off and then think they're good to go. And I guess they are, but maybe mm. not. I don't know. I would argue, too, that, yeah, there's some bad ones like this. But overwhelmingly, if there was no active duty troops on social media you would have an even bigger recruiting crisis. And I think some of the biggest draws to people on the fence, I've seen way more genuinely funny. It's like shitty moments where they're all bouncing around in the back of like an LTV, but they're all <laughs> laughing or like, whatever. I've seen funnier embracing the suck moments by troops being hilarious that I'd be like, oh man, that's what I miss about the military. That if I was Gen Z thinking about joining, 
I'd be like, yeah, I went in on that. That looks like shitty, but fun as hell at the same time. Like, look how tight knit that crew is. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like they've, they also have to have a presence online and overwhelmingly, I think it's actually been pretty good, oddly enough. Yeah, so. I think I think you might be right with that. I, I think it will probably deter some people that might have been on the fence. But I do think largely you'll see a lot of these funny videos. And if you're 18 and you don't have much direction or anything else going on, you'll think to yourself, OK, maybe the military isn't that bad. And the more I was thinking about it last night, you, you think about the things they're complaining about, specifically the low pay. I, I'm generalizing here. The majority of enlisted soldiers are straight from high school. Where are you going straight from high school and, and making a crazy paycheck with, with just a high school diploma and no experience really tell doing anything? Tell them, recruiter cons. Tell them. I'm just yeah. saying, right? Like, yeah, yeah. you're making it sound like, oh, the military, like, I'm not, you know, the military could probably pay everybody a little bit better. But if you're just coming out of high school and you try to go get a job, where are you getting a job where it's going to be exponentially more money than what you would make in the military. Probably one where you are not going to die. If you, if you, <laughs> fair enough, it. Fair. Like, fair where enough. you're not going to deploy there and things route. like that. And the money is substantially different. Once you start getting BAH, these folks that live in the barracks and that they're on post and they get on post pay and they get money taken out for, so they can go to the chow hall. They absolutely should bitch. I mean, yeah. because at this point I've seen some of the paychecks that they get, where you have E1s and E2s that'll send like what they're currently making. Like after taxes, they could get $1,500, $1,600 a month, like in some of these spots. That's fuck. My kid makes more money at Chipotle than that. So I, I think that there is aspects. Like, and if you have these TikToks, again, there's no job in the world that you're going to, that TikTokers are going to be like, this is fucking awesome, where you have everybody. Yeah. That's not the way the world works. Everybody complains about everything. I think too, chaps, like what you're saying, we've had whole episodes talking about the amount of food insecurity in the military yeah, because of the low pay. It's not a TikToker's problem for bringing that to the to light or moldy barracks on TikTok. That's, if you want better recruiting numbers, better pay, better barracks, Papa John's, you know? I'm just saying you gotta <laughs> really, those are things that the military needs to fix. I don't think, I think it's easy to point at like Gen Z TikTokers for hurting recruiting, yeah. but, but I don't think that's food. really- Right. Yeah. I think that's low hanging fruit. I don't think the, the, the folks on TikTok drive the numbers one way or the other. There's, yeah. there's probably, you know, some people you could point to, but it's not significant in any way. Yeah. So one young recruit, Shamar Williams, in uniform, appearing to be on base, looks into the camera and tells his 34,000 followers his top five reasons not to join the military. Echoing last year's grievances, Williams bemoans, we do not get paid enough to perform the mission that is tasked to us lack of autonomy and sacrifices in family life. According to federal data, more than 20,000 active duty troops are on food stamps to make ends meet. And like, like I was just saying, like that's not the TikTokers problem though. I do think it is bold to do that in uniform. Like I'm not going to feel sorry for you if you get called to the carpet. Um, injury mm-hmm. and healthcare, also a concern for a young recruit who identified himself as Triel. He advised against joining the army because this is very physically demanding. The army doesn't give a fuck if you fucked up you better see the personal trainer. He also complains that commanding officers are on a power trip and you can't do nothing. Uh, and that's like, honey, do a little more research before you join then. That's yeah. kind of my thought on that I guy. Mean, that's basically, <laughs> the, I mean, if you're like, what the hell? We got to stay in shape? What the fuck is this? Right. Wait, we got to listen to what the person in charge says? What, what's going on here? I can't yeah. just do what I want? But and again, the- I feel like if I was dead set on joining, a guy like that's not going to turn me off from it. I'm going to be like, yeah, no shit. It's physically demanding. Like no shit. There's sacrifices you have to make. I already was looking at and like what Uh, anyway, but so yeah, I don't think it's really hurting recruiting. I think if anything, having a presence on social media, that's overwhelmingly funny, whether the higher ups like it or not. And like shows real life troops, like, Oh, they're normal. Like me. That's somebody just like me who's serving in the military. I think overall Gen Z being on TikTok is probably a good thing. Oddly enough. I think, Overall, the only person or people this really influences are the folks who just weren't really clued into how the military really is to begin with. All the civilians out there who basically either they don't have anyone in their family who was in the military or their knowledge of the military comes from what they've seen in movies. So, I mean, there was nothing groundbreaking with any of these complaints. These complaints have been the complaints forever. Now, 
as we've always said, just because it sucked for me doesn't mean it should suck for you. Mm -hmm. That does mean that, you know, improvements should be made so that maybe we can get over the hurdle that some of these issues present. Yeah. Shut up about PT. Shut up about like having to do things late at night, having to listen to your commanding officers. I don't care about that. Unless you can make it funny. Then then I'm back in. I don't care about that. I do care about 20,000 people being food insecure and having to be on food. Yes. That's yes. a big deal. I do care well, about people having super moldy barracks. I do care about people be treating like children whenever they're in the barracks. Let them have a fucking hot plate. Let them act like they're <laughs> goddamn adults. Like if you can, if you could trust somebody to rip lines with a 240 or a Ma Deuce, you should be able to trust them en- enough to make ramen on their in in their barracks room like that shouldn't be too difficult all right let's move on to no 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 no. what i got my list of vix here no that's a round number two katie oh oh good thank god okay a different round that's what we're gonna move on to let's move on to round number two where we're gonna talk about x kate came up with a list of the ones that she thought were the military ickiest and then i'm gonna go through Todd's is going to go through ours. And so you know how we're going to fucking do this. Okay, you start with the military icks. What do you got? Okay, for this for this ick list, I have two military ick lists, my own personal military icks. And then um, pretend my name is Dennis. Okay. I'm a peacetime veteran. Okay. I was a supply clerk. Can we change it to Rick? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm Rick. I'm a peacetime veteran. I got out in 98, actually. But I am heavily on Facebook. Okay. Okay. And these are my military icks. All right. One, ponytails in uniform now. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're doing icks. You're doing icks for fellas to the ladies. You know what's going to get sucked up into a black hawk? A fucking ponytail. That's right. Pull crew down. Uh, Women with their nails done in uniform. Mm. Kate's doing a crusty veteran. All the. Go ahead. You're doing the crusty veteran. Uh, Ix that letting those women in combat arms like they aren't going to get their periods all over our flak jackets. Mm-hmm. Uh, women doing stuff in uniform in general. It <laughs> just irks just me women. in ways, ways I cannot go make me a sandwich. Yep. <laughs> it's a joke I'm still putting on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I say queers? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Might have to figure out how to bleep that one, Kate. <laughs> Okay. All right. Never Didn't mind. Then. The old Q bomb on the show today. All right. Well, I got to go. This is my lawyer calling. I sexually harassed a couple people at a Jimmy Buffett cover band concert. Hold on. I'll talk to you guys later. That, that's fine. Cons, what are your icks? Okay. Um, my, I only had one ick when okay. I was in the military. It, honestly, everything else, you know, I could usually look past. But anybody who had a preconceived notion about me because they heard I went to West Point and I walked into a formation and they said, oh, this guy's from West Point. And they made all sorts of snap judgments. I hated that because inevitably really an ick, that's just it hurt you like it was right. it was painful. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you that were... was mine. <laughs> Kate, Cons came in like I want to instead of X, I'm going to talk about things that just hurt my feelings. <laughs> No, it was just annoying. It was always annoying because I inevitably I would flip them, but whatever. <laughs> but I also made a list. I was instructed to make a list. Mm-hmm. If I was 23-year-old Kate, or are we thinking about 23-year-old Kate in the military, what would give her the ick? And so Kate, here's the you list. have to confirm or deny. Okay. Yes. Um, officers. Gave me the ick? Yeah, just in general. Any authority, an officer, really, yeah. yeah yes, yeah. right. Kind of scared me, um, kind of gave me the ick. Yes. All right. That's one. Uh, anybody who ha- came in with a college degree for that matter. Can I say specifically of officers, this is going to sound fucked up. The kind of officer that gave me the ick an out of shape officer gave me the mm. ick big time. So yeah. I was like, if you're going to be bossing me much. around, tell me what to do. You better have cummy G's man or woman. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, But you, I mean, that is one thing I'll say about Marine officers very very rare to see a marine officer out of shape that's mm-hmm. exactly and so if you were it kind of gave me the ick I'm yeah like what the fuck is your problem i mm-hmm. i almost every single one i ever could run us into the dirt and mm-hmm. there was something that like you didn't want to like him but you had to respect it because you're you not know? passing tbs unless you're essentially like an athlete like you're not passing yeah. tbs without that so anyway yeah that gave me the ick go I'm ahead passing boot camp though a bunch of fun. um <laughs> 23 year old Kate got the ick from any Marine or anybody who had good credit. 
Yeah, because what do you have to prove? What do you have to <laughs> right. prove? Yeah. None of my buddies, I had buddies that like almost couldn't deploy because their credit was so bad they became a security risk. And those were my guys. <laughs> All That's right. True. All right. Um, anybody, I don't know how you guys do it in the Marines, but in the Army, we we, we wear all the, the different badges. Mm -hmm. If you went to like air assault, airborne school, anybody who had a stack of badges. So they were obviously very squared away. Kate, that would give 23-year-old Kate the ick. Um, extremely squared away people, yes. Freaked me the fuck yeah. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, I knew that kind of goes in. You weren't for me. Yeah, that goes into my next two. Actually, A anybody who was like NCO of the quarter. Yeah, they pro well, they probably didn't like me either. To be yeah. fair, I so, think Cons then... is just making a list of military me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, we and said then, yeah, the last one. Yeah, Japs and I would not have met. No, you guys would not have gotten. No, we would have not have been no. buddies. Nope. And the last thing um, that would give 23-year-old uh, Kate the ick was if somebody was not lazy. Like if they were I didn't like lazy. To be fair. Yeah, I, didn't I like think you're lazy. wrong on that one. All I right. didn't like lazy. I wasn't late, but I didn't like, you couldn't be too big of a shit bag and you couldn't be too squared away that you were like going to rat on me or, or get mad at me for walking on the grass when you're only like a rank or two above me. Like, come on. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That kind of thing. It would have to be a middle ground of like delicate shitbaggery. If that yeah, I could see you liking people that are very proficient at their job, but didn't care about the pomp and circumstance. Yes, I was not a pomp and circumstance or a customs and courtesies lady. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. I yeah. came, I found some other ones that I thought just were good. Okay, you tell me if this would give you the ick. When okay. it's windy and he's trying to navigate napkins. Trying like to navigate napkins. Yeah. Like they're blowing all around and he's like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, I can't control the napkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ick there. Yep. All right. Next one. Thinking about him saying, woo, on a roller coaster makes me sick. <laughs> Wee, I could deal with, but woo, no. Yeah. No, I that's... think it's the opposite. I think you could do it with a woo, but not a wee. A wee would be, he's being silly. Yeah, a he's just a little goofball. Is genuine from the heart. Pussy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. Breaking his mechanical pencil and having to pick up all the lead using his fingers as little pincers. If, if, if he broke it, fine. He can't pick it up. He can't try and pick it up. Yeah, you just got to brush that off, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, next one. These get progressively better. When his laces are done up really tight and he's got a massive bow on his shoes. Ooh. Oh, hate it. Hate that. You got to tuck, buddy. You got to tuck. <laughs> you just look like a baby. Yeah, um, look like an idiot. Playing, <laughs> playing, this one kills me. Playing crack the egg on the trampoline, and he volunteers to be the egg. <laughs> yeah, that would give me the egg. Yeah, you walk up to a bar, yeah. and somebody's like, "Hey, there's a trampoline. Let's break the egg. I want to be the egg." They're bouncing around and coming off. No way. That's big time. Exciting. No, that makes you a pick me. Oh, big All time. Right. All right. Um, imagine. Him waiting for his phone to charge after it dies, and he's just sitting there with nothing to do. Mm -mm. I do, I wouldn't have thought about this, but I think about a dude sitting on the edge of his bed with his phone plugged in, just kind of sitting there waiting for it to charge up. I do think like, that's Are you looking ridiculous. at me? Don't look at me. Yeah. I got nothing to say to you. Nope. Anyway. Um, <laughs> when he When he's going to get a haircut and you see him wearing that little cape, I don't mind the oh. little cape. I don't yeah. mind the little cape. You disagree with that one? I, I think it's just part of the... There's nothing you can do about that. I'm not going to judge you for it. This one might go into the military academy, or category. Seeing him run around with a backpack on. Run around with a backpack. I see. I wore a green jam sport instead of a purse for a long time. Yeah. And that probably gave that guys the ick. That probably gave mm. a lot of guys the ick. Yeah, I do think the... Mm -hmm. A backpack bouncing around makes you look like a baby. The worst Ooh. was when I went to that bar in New York City and my backpack got caught in the door. That was embarrassing. How about this? People who do military specific, and this is for people in the military, but when you're in the military and the people who do military specific workouts, not associated with their unit. So you just see someone on the street doing a ruck march because they want to do a rock oh, march. Oh, yeah. Especially, especially if they're wearing ranger panties. Yeah. 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 And, and not sneakers either. 
boots. And yeah. Unless you're training. active duty and you're home on leave trying to stay in shape. All right, here we go. It. We got a backpack on, like a, a rucksack that you could tell is really heavy, shirtless, wearing ranger panties, and all white Oakleys. Ick. You got me back with the all white Oakleys. Yeah, yeah, you seem like you'd like that, you piece of shit. Mm -hmm. You would you would like somebody in Oakleys. I I would double take it. I would give that a double take. There's also that's also the there's also a rule. You have to be a certain level of hot to pull that off. Yeah. Like Rudy Reyes. He could do it. Right. I don't care if you're super hot doing a military workout, you're fine. But if you're But you can't be too normie, hot, right? Because then you're rubbing it in people's faces. Oh no, you can be super, super hot doing it. Oh, you can. I'm not. I'm gonna be pissed. At see, that. like for me, it's the opposite. I see some hottie with her tits out. I'm like the ick. The ick. Yeah. Mm, All right. Not really. All right. When he's on the outside of the dance circle and can't wait for a spot to jump in. Oh, I I know a guy. Every cons? family wedding does the cons? same. <laughs> Listen, Michael I think Jones. anybody, like I can dance. But anybody who can dance a little too well and, and they're just waiting to show it off, I'm talking they can do Justin Timberlake, Michael Jackson-esque They keep moves. going up to the DJ to request that one song that they know they have the dance to. Yeah, to. yeah no. right. Like, mm. I'm out. Like, there was years ago when um, Beyonce's uh, Single Ladies song was out, I knew a girl and I happened, she crashed a wedding night. Was that was 20 years, things. by the way. 20 years ago. No way. I swear. Holy shit. No way. Mm-hmm. All right, Jesus. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, she and she broke out and she was so proud of herself, like for doing all the moves. And it was just uncomfortable to watch. Yeah, people that know choreography to songs, I would say that's the ick. Yeah. Like, Kate, you walk up to the bar, somebody's got their medals on, they got like three, they're a Lance Corporal, and they know all the dance moves to crank that soldier boy. I was uh, just thinking crank that soldier boy because yeah. wait, we all did that at the Marine Corps ball and that Dude. was fun. All our medals fell off. Yeah, but yeah. everybody just did like the one or two things, not right. the entire yeah. thing. It's right. okay, I think, if you know, you know, the one or two moves, but to break out the full choreography that you clearly had to have practiced. I'm right. sorry. You don't just watch that once and you know internalize it. Even the best dancers can't do that. Unless, so anybody who's a little too prepared. Unless it's the electric slide. I feel oh, like yeah. you well, know the electric slide, you get fucked. Like that's something that people want to fuck you if you're good at the yep. electric slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. This one, I this one's good because I had to really think about it. And I think I do get the ick, even amongst friends. So if you're if you're with a new person, like you're starting to date somebody, let's say Kate, they're at your house for the first time, or even that they're at your parents' house. And they're in the bathroom and you're not sure if somebody's in there or not. You knock on the door and they say, somebody's in here. Doesn't that give you the ick? Yeah, I think you guys say, hold on. Yeah, I, but somebody's in here. It just sounds like you're a coward. You got to yeah. say who it is. Don't be You got to say, hold on with authority. You got to be like, hold on. I'm taking a shit. Taking hold a on. Shit. Yeah. Yep. Or just or just a very loud noise. Like, huh? I think you're good. Well, yeah, I'm yeah. in here. <coughs> I think oh, this I one is for magic. sure a Kate when he's talking to you at dinner and you can't hear him. Oh, oh. that's probably soft one of talker. my biggest dicks is soft talkers. I I cannot in any circumstance. It just fucking kills me. Yeah. Yeah. Grow yeah up. I knew that one was going to be. And this one really yeah. applies to my honeymoon. So when I went to Jamaica, I think I gave Luckily, we were married because if not, I think she would have divorced me. We were going on this little trip uh, to do a zip line through the jungles and or, uh, one jungle, one zip line. So we were doing a one little zip line thing and it had a stream that you were supposed to cross and you can hang out in this waterfall area after you're done. We were coming out like she was getting dressed, put like her bathing suit and cover up and all that. I was dressed, had my board shorts on and a shirt that I could go in. And then I came out of the bathroom. I had my shoes on already and it was water socks. And she looked down and she was like, are you wearing fucking water socks? And I had to get water socks from the gift shop though, the hotel, because I had forgotten any type of sandals. 
So I was sitting there in water socks. Water socks is an ick. Your thoughts? Water socks on anyone are just, are just, I would rather step on a thousand crab claws than be seen. I'll say than be seen wearing water socks. Um, also, I, down in I Texas, think went to, one time. Go ahead, go well, ahead. maybe go ahead. Go ahead. Go, no, 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 no. I think you might be hitting on what I'm about to say. Go ahead. Oh, no. Sent Pat into a store. We're all going tubing to buy. We were going to wear them. God bless. Yes. Going so tubing. I think when you're floating the river, that's like the one time where it makes sense because it's, you know, you know, 12, 13 inches deep, whatever. And it's all rocks. And you're and hammered you can, drunk. Yeah. So, but sent Pat into the store for aqua. We call him aqua socks. And he came out yeah. with blue socks. He's like, what? Um, you gotta, <laughs> thought it was just the color. <laughs> Last one. You're going on a date, Kate. And he's not sure what type of ice cream that he wants. And he uses the little spoon. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I have a difficult time figuring out the perfect ice cream order too. I kind of get it. But the, get it. taking a little, a little lick on the mini spoon, that doesn't give you the ick? Depends. What if he curls his tongue around it while he winks at you? And you're like, oh, oh, I see. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that's worse. Hmm. I think that's just, you know, taking advantage. What if he advantage. slaps it on his tongue a little bit before he eats it? You know, what if he really... All right, let's move on to round number three. Which Wait, today is I got my military eggs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's move on to round number three, which today is presented ROTC by our good friends. ROTC kids. They what? Oh, Way too yeah. sexually active. They have volunteer fireman energy. Big X Freaks me out. You never know what their rank is. Um, bringing kids and babies to the barracks. Yeah. I don't care what three of the... the, the, the it, as like you're dating, a, dating I'm somebody. I'm surprised you had that one now. Because I had a sergeant who was in the barracks who was kind of a weird guy and he had this lady staying with him for a week with a bit with like an infant in the mm. barracks. He was they were hiding it. That's the kind of circumstance I'm talking okay. about. Okay. Again, all the purposes hiding kids and infants in the barracks. Excuse okay. me, Ick. Um any higher rank, even if it's just one rank higher, borrowing money, cars, or bumming cigarettes from lower any rank lower yeah. than them. I've never seen the other ones, but bumming a cigarette or bumming a dip all the time used to infuriate me. Yeah. If you were a rank above, get your own or ask a rank above you. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Your platoon commander, your platoon leader rolls up to the smoke pit and you offer them a lip. Is it okay if they take it? No. No, it's not because I don't want to see officers smoking or dipping in uniform. I think that that's a gross behavior to be smoking and drinking or doing anything like that with enlisted folks. I don't think you should do that. Interesting. Yeah. I would never like if my, I would have a legit conversation if I'm a staff NCO and a lieutenant, first lieutenant, second lieutenant captain came out to the smoke pit and wanted to smoke and joke with all the different younger troops. I would have a conversation. No, like, you not not like that. This. Not fraternizing like that, but I've seen. No, not even in, fraternizing. I think I'm that's just smoking. Hot. I think just in general, one, I don't think officers should smoke in uniform or dip in uniform ever. Like, I don't think I in think their office. Dipping in uniform get some respect. No, I disagree. I don't think that about, they should be doing it. What about cigars? At the right. I don't think cigarettes are ever appropriate. I don't think dips ever appropriate at the Marine Corps ball at a mess night, something like that at a graduation to celebrate like a celebratory or something like that. Cigar. I'm fine with cigarettes and dip. Never in uniform. Never. And only when we're officers and enlisted. No. I mean, if you're with other officers, Smoking, I think that's even worse. You look like a bunch of shit bags doing that. This is making me right. want to go back through OCS just to send you a video of me smoking with my butter bars on. <laughs> well, two OCS. What of it, chaps? It Jokes on you, bitch. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I would hate that. I would hate it. Hate it. I tr- me I'm jogging like legit with an umbrella. To imagine me running with an umbrella across the grass, just ripping a heater. And my, like my, my I, I understand. I understand where you're coming from, though. I get it. I, I understand parts of it. Yeah. I'm so far removed now and I don't get military triggered about stuff anymore. I'm triggered about thinking about officers smoking in uniform. Mm. I just hate it. I, 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 I agree with you. 
I agree with you. Smoking smoke, ribbon darts in uniform, I, I think it does kind of make you look a little trashy and a little like a dirt bag. And and it's one of those things. This is you guys are me me beating my own right head. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's but no, because like, no, I think back to, to the, like, the officers I knew who who smoked cigarettes, and I was like, oh, they were, those were always kind of like the dirt bags. They weren't, yeah. you know, the squared away guys. They weren't the guys who were in the best shape. Um, you know, so I actually you know, think it's sergeant and below behavior. I think once you become a staff and CEO, you should also not smoke in uniform or dip in uniform. I could see dip at the range, never smoke in uniform if you're a uh, staff and CEO or higher. I think it's sergeant and below behavior. I think it depends on what medals and ribbons you have. Now, Zen, <laughs> I feel like Zen can be any group. That's any right. Group. You can, anybody can do that. And if you're um, listening my- and you're triggered, maybe you should try our friends at BetterHelp, right, Cons? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a solid option because Zero Block 30 is sponsored by BetterHelp. So whether or not, you know, we got Christmas coming up, whether or not your family gives gifts during the holidays, you get to define how you give to yourself. And the holidays are a great time to do that. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easier on yourself during the tough moments, treating yourself to a day of complete rest, Remember, give yourself some love this holiday season. If you've benefited from ver- therapy, oh. Keep going. Can we cut that? Nope. <laughs> read the part you weren't supposed to read. It says read verbatim, so I was just reading everything. <laughs> oh, Ron Burgundy had ass. <laughs> you got me. They Ron burgundy me. Sorry, but if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Legitimately, I'm, my jokes aside, you know, BetterHelp is amazing. We've all done it, and it really is legitimately um a great service and especially for my, you know, myself, um, you know, married kid moving things, things have been stressful and, and better has been there to, to help me get through it. So, uh, the great part is now it's entirely online. So, you know, sometimes if you're in person with someone, it can be a little uncomfortable, but it's entirely online. So it's, it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. So you just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist uh, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Cause anybody who's done therapy can tell you not all therapists are a match for each person that they see. So that's okay. If you switch. So in the season of giving, give yourself what you need with better help, visit betterhelp.com slash zero today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp H E L P.com slash zero. All right, let's move on to round number three. We're going to talk about some good stuff. We oftentimes talking about some negative stuff that the military is doing. We have some good shit, right, Katie? Yes, we do. And we're talking the cold. We're talking a little weather here, folks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, troops who endure freezing temperatures may soon find their hands a little toastier and pockets lined with some extra cash. Mm-hmm. Under a measure included in the annual defense bill passed this week, Troops in cold weather stations will now see a new cold weather location special duty pay for assignments where the temperature drops below 20 degrees Fahrenheit or is expected to drop below 20 degrees Fahrenheit based on the 2012 plant hardiness zone map. I don't even know. Why do we use that? What's the plant hardiness zone map? Basically, there are certain plants that for sure can and cannot survive in certain temperature environments. And so Mm. that's a pretty good way to base like the line of where here's the yeah, line where you, these plants grow anywhere above it where they don't is probably 20 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. You know what I mean? I that makes know. sense. Cause and you gotta have a cutoff. Sense. You gotta have a very clear cutoff somewhere. So that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. How the new pay will end up in paychecks is still to be worked out, which look okay, this is from task and purpose, by the way, which locations might be eligible and how much the pay might be can't be determined until the national defense authorization act becomes law. But with a cutoff temperature of negative 20 degrees. Oh, I should have said, I think I said 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Pardon me, negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Because I was like, damn, there's a lot of places where it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Negative <laughs> 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It may apply to troops stationed in places like Patuffic Space Base, formerly Thule Air Base fake in Greenland. Place. That's a fake place. I mean, it even has a fake name. Patuffic Space Base. Um The 22,000 active duty personnel in Alaska and even members assigned to the famously frigid Air Force bases in the upper Midwest. It's quite possible that it is a recognition that's uncomfortable to be living in a cold climate. But part of me thinks it's more tied to the remoteness than it is to the temperature, said Kate Kuzminski, director of Military Veterans and Society Program. There are and she's right. 
it I think it is tougher to be super, super isolated in the boondoggles. That's more hazardous to your mind, I think, than the temperature of the completely uh, agree. Yeah. And like one of the bases that they are talking about, I printed out some information about that base. So it says the winter in Thule, which is the spot in Greenland, are long and bitterly cold with temperatures often well below freezing. The average low temperature during the winter months, November to April, can range from negative 10 to negative 30 or even lower. Strong winds and heavy snowfall are common in this area. I think this is the why people this is the reason why, simply because of mental health factors in the next part. Yeah. Yeah. The summer months from June to July are relatively short and cool with the average temperature about 40 degrees. But the area experiences midnight sun phenomenon where the sun never drops, where it's light all the time. And then on the flip side, it never gets light. Like if it, even here in Chicago, one in New York too, like when I was in New York and I would come to visit and we would do radio, like Barstool Radio, come out at 4.30, 5 o'clock, whenever it was done, and it's dark already, that kind of stuff really affects your mental health. And that's getting dark at 4, 430. You talk about never getting light. I mean, that destroys your mental health. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. seasonal depression is very much a thing. Yeah, and I mean, I mean like way worse. It gives you there. the ick. It's never light out. It's fucking mm -hmm. freezing. You can't go outside. Yeah, um, no and, reprieve. Yeah, in 2021, the Army saw 17 suicides out of its 11,000 soldiers based in Alaska. Um, and yeah, so and anything that can help morale, I feel like is much needed. And so, I mean, I at my school, like all the buildings are gray. So we have what we actually call it the gray period from when you get back from Christmas, because you basically have nothing to look forward to until and you're on the river. Break. So you got the fog from the Hudson. It was so gray the day you took me around. I was like, damn, yeah. I haven't there was like, I don't think I saw any color the entire day. Yeah. Now like imagine there's snow on the ground. On Rainbow bright. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Imagine there's there's snow on the ground, it's freezing cold, windy, no light, more or less, and it's getting dark at four o'clock, like you're talking about, chaps. Thousand percent that affects no your women mood. for two thousand five hundred miles at least, except for the ones <laughs> exactly there. God bless you. Yeah, yeah, especially if they're nice wearing ladies. a love spell. Love spell used to do it for me. Oh, buddy. <laughs> a little Victoria's Secret love spell. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. And then the other thing, I mentioned it, where you're going to have more separation pay, 400 bucks instead of 250 I think it should be based on location. Like pay should be based on location and hardship. Where if you're going to a spot where everybody, like if you go to Hawaii, you don't get extra money for the weather in Hawaii. Fort Drum, Fort Polk. Like, I, because anywhere else, any other job that you're going to have, they're going to have to pay you to go to yeah. that shitty spot. Imagine the money that it would cost a, a civilian to live in a place like Greenland. Oh, you know what? It shouldn't be the plants that determine where this, they should have like a, a hot, really cool influencer like Alex Earl has to go to each base. And she's like, oh, the nightlife here, non existent. The weather <laughs> sucks, can't wear anything cool. They get 500 extra bucks a year. Yep. Uh, this base kind of near Miami. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about it this way, too. We all got extra pay when we were serving in a desert. Now, granted, it was also a combat zone. So taking that into account. But some of these Arctic areas are also technically deserts because the desert is any place. I think it's like 10 or 12 inches. If you get anything less than that of rainfall a year, you're considered a desert. So maybe it's desert pay too. So it may not even be the temperature, but we could go somewhere like a Fort Drum. I, but I don't know if they count. Do they count snow? No, they don't count snow as They should. Rain. I mean, you should but get. Antarctica is a desert and that has snow out the wazoo. Yeah, you'll have snow there. They said that yeah, there's yeah, yeah. A, a shit ton of snow that happens in that area. Right, right. right. So I don't know. I'm in South like Pole TikTok right now too. And it's fascinating. The things that are yeah. going on there. That and the. North Sea and the Baltic Sea. Have you guys seen those videos of like the mm -hmm. tankers that have to go through there? Oh, yeah, actually, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, They're yeah, braver that's... than the U.S. Marines, no doubt about it. Those people get extra pay for going through those difficult oceans. Of course, and dude. Seas. Yeah, like, exactly. Nobody's so doing that shit too. for $18 an hour. Right. <laughs> you better so it get totally makes sense. Yeah. Hey if you're going to do that. All right, let's move on to some save rounds and alibis. Cons, we'll start with you. A uh, cu couple uh, things. And, and Kate... I don't say this to disparage you right now because I know I know you still have the the snoo and you're working with that. 
I have something to tell you. I've, I've, I feel bad because they lent it to me for free. I, I used it twice, and now it's 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 like a clothes hamper. We we just sold ours, and I don't know that we'll ever get one ever again. And yeah. I said this. I think because the snoo was so ridiculously expensive, everyone just kind of lies. It's like this unspoken lie that everybody says. Because like, nobody wants to admit, wait, maybe this thing's not magic like a everybody baby claims it is. A baby $1,650, yeah. Yeah, it just it, it shakes tough. a little. Like that doesn't work for every baby. So anyway, we sold our snoo. I don't know if we're going to be snooing it up for any future children. And if we do, yeah. we might just rent one. Um, anyway. Um, and then I, I feel like the, you'll hear me say this on here, but I'm going to do a very nice post because I am a people pleaser and it was nice that they sent it to me. Yeah. So, oh, so you're going to be dishonest with your fans. Smart, absolutely. Kate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and then, um, Yesterday, no, maybe it was, no, it was this weekend, Sunday. Yes, Sunday. I had my, um, you know, arrested development. It's a banana, Michael. What could it cost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my life, okay, I've never purchased a gas fireplace, okay? My parents, we, hit, we grew up with wood fireplace, and then in my parents' house now, they have one, but it never fell on me to go purchase a gas fireplace, so I went because we need to ultimately replace our, our fireplace. Um, it passed inspection, but ultimately it's, it's, you know, um, old and, um, we need to do that. I had no idea what gas fireplaces cost. I couldn't have even, you know, price is right. Like, uh, you know, try to guess like 20, in the 000. game, how oh, much? No. 20,000. Yeah, it's just a couple thousand, but still like, oh, I, so I, I don't know anything. I I have a forty thousand was an outrageous guess. It's like twenty five hundred is where you're a lot typically, not with install, just like getting it. Yeah, Yeah. homeownership. But I'm just saying, like, I had no idea. Like, that's the thing about homeownership. I think there's so many things that you just kind of take for granted growing up, and then you have to go buy it yourself, and you realize, like, oh, I didn't know what that costs. Now you know. Todd's save rounds and alibis lately has turned into like the most dad shit of all time. Yeah. He's yeah, like these definitely. these oh. whippersnappers outside my house causing all kinds of racket with their <laughs> laughing and noise making. I'll tell you, it's so quiet in the suburbs. I love it. It is <laughs> love quiet. It. All right, Kate, what about you? Um, speaking of, t- I was going to the grocery store. There's a grocery store here in my neighborhood called Mariano's, and you actually park on the roof, so you drive up around the thing on the roof, and there's security guards there to kind of patrol it. And I was turning to start driving up the ramp to park on the roof. And I see these teenagers come running down holding a giant stop sign. And then the security cars were chasing them. There were ste- kids stealing a big old sign. And I almost wanted to be like, get in, get in, come on, <laughs> let's get the fuck out of here. But anyway, uh, so I know what you mean about the riffraff around here. Oh, yeah. But it made me, miss- uh, but anyway, um, do I have any Save Rounds alibis? No, I don't think I do. All right. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> oh, I, I had a, I stopped at a, a bar and had half a beer the other day. So I'm back. How was that? It was a treat. It was a delight. Nice. I yeah, I was so happy store. when you texted me that you're like, I'm sitting here having a beer. And then you sent it and it looked like half a jelly jar full of beer. <laughs> it was <laughs> like, a teeny, it was like a shot glass full of beer. Yeah. And I, it was like 11 in the morning and I made it real weird with the bartender. I was like, just a mom with her baby having a beer. And then. And they the wouldn't bathroom, have gave a fuck if you just ordered a beer. Is, let me ask you this. This is the hypothetical. Maybe I did or didn't do this. Is this wrong? The bathroom was very small and I had to go before I left. It was kind of a hike back to the house. And so I turned to the bartender and I said, um, do you mind watching my baby real quick? No, I think you got to do what you got to do okay. sometimes. Like, cause you, you still, you still got to go. Yeah. And it's like, what's he going to do? Run down the block with my baby and uh, holding it like a football and sprint <laughs> off of him? Probably not. He was buckled Probably looking in. forward to you getting out of there. Yeah, probably. But luckily, and I remember this from radio days, nobody pees faster than Kate. Fastest Dude, peer in the block. Chaps, without when, a doubt. When I had the stranger watching my baby, well, I, you sh- I almost blew out my pee ring, whatever that is. <laughs> I I peed so fast. I And so I made a point because I was in there so fast to be shaking off my hands uh, to prove like, hey, I peed so fast. I still had time to wash my hands. Like I wanted him to know I washed my hands. Cause he, I was so fast. I was like, there's no way this guy's going to think I had time to wash my hands. Very proud. Anyway, what's your save round? 
Well, that's how Kate pisses um, for my <laughs> for my save rounds. I'm looking forward to Christmas here. Uh, this is our last show before Christmas break. We go on yeah. Christmas break. So we're excited about that. This is my first Christmas up here that our house looks lovely. Like all the little street, the houses on the street because they're so much closer together. Everybody's kind of decorated. We had one of those walks, you know, where they put the old white lunch bags on the street and they add a candle. Yeah. Like every house in our area had that. Like the village helped put them out all over the place. It was like that. And the kids absolutely loved it. I have a big ass today actually was a huge order of firewood showed up at my house. That was oak and cherry that we're going to have and start having fire pits. I think I'm going to have a fire pit every night of this break. That's not Hell um, yeah. that it's not raining. I think that that's mm. what I'm going to do and having a legit cold Christmas. I think it's going to be a great It changes time. it, man. Yeah. First it changes it. Christmas for you. Very, it, it's a different feeling. It feels like Christmas. I can't imagine Christmas with a temperature in you know the 60s or higher. It doesn't yeah. feel also, like Christmas. Um, but I didn't realize this was I'm in La La Land, the last episode before Christmas. Shout out to all the troops listening that are not going to be home for Christmas. I know that's really hard. Yeah. I feel like all, have all have you guys had Christmases away from home while you were in? Yeah. No. I yeah. never had one. I had Thanksgiving. That was it. Um, I, 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 no, more. I haven't gone home for Christmas since I was 17. Well, for those of us who, who really were into our dads, uh, it could be really t- <laughs> no offense. It can not take really it. He's tough. dead, so I'm good. <laughs> For those of us with alive dads, uh, <laughs> yeah. it can be really tough to go. Um, but it can just be a tough time of year, and you can feel lonely and whatever. Um, this this shall pass, and you'll have good Christmases ahead. And and maybe I feel like sometimes the holidays that I missed, where I was stuck with my troop buddies, ended up being some of my favorite holidays of all time. Oh so, yeah, like even though it's gonna suck, like if you've never done it before. It does stink, but you're going to have stories to tell later on in life about yeah, some of the Thanksgivings I missed at home and with my troop buddies, like smoke pit Thanksgiving ended up being one of my favorite of all time Thanksgiving. So yeah. Um, but I'm just sending good vibes to everybody. I know it could just be kind of weird, tough season. Send in love and thanks to everybody who listens and don't yeah. sing. I'll be home for Christmas. Cause you're going to cry. If you're yeah. in the barracks, don't be hitting that one. You yeah. need to hit up Dominic, the donkey, some jingle bell, some grandma got ran over by the reindeer. Mm-hmm. Not I'll be home for Christmas because you're not. You you're don't want to be an integrity violator. Mm. Sound the retreat. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>